Hello everyone, how are you? Hope you are well by the grace of Almighty Allah. This is lecture number 11 and welcome to my lecture, today's lecture. And today I am going to talk about the themes of Iliad, the great poem Iliad that was written by the great Greek writer writer Homer you know what does the theme mean the themes are the fundamental and often universal ideas explored in a literary work and before going to start today's lecture in Iliad the, the playwright used many themes to glorify its poem. First theme, the glory of war has been had been discussed in this poem. One can make a strong argument that the image seems to be a celebrated war. Characters emerges as worthy or despicable based on their degree of com competence and bravery in battle. Paris, for example, doesn't like to fight. And correspondingly receives the scorn of both his family and his lover. Achilles, on the other hand, wins eternal glory by explicitly rejecting the option of a long, comfortable, uneventful life at home. The taste itself seems to support this means of judging character and extends it even to the gods. The epic holds a warlike deities such as Athena for the readers, admiration while it makes fun of gods who run from aggression. Using the timidity of Aphrodite and Artemis to create a scene of comic relief, the fight is to prove one's honor and integrity, while to avoid warfare is to demonstrate laziness, ignoble fear, misaligned priorities. To be sure, the Iliad doesn't ignore the realities of war. Men die gruesome days, women become slaves and concubines, estranged from their fearful fathers and mothers, a plague breaks out in the Achaean camp and decimates the army. In the face of these horrors, even my mightiest warriors occasionally experience fear, and the poet tells us that both armies regret that the war ever be became. Though Achilles points out that all men, whether brave or thoroughly, the same date in the end. The poem never asks the reader to question the legitimacy of the ongoing struggle. Homer never implies that the fight constitutes a waste of time or human life. Rather, he portrays each side as having a justifiable reason to fight, depicts warfare as a respectable and even glorious manner of setting the dispute. Military glory over family life has also been discussed or focused. A theme in the Iliad closely related to the glory of war is the predominance of military glory over family. The text clearly admires the reciprocal bonds of difference and obligations that bind homeric families together. But if you respect much more highly the pursuit of players, the glory and renown that one wins in the eyes of others by performing their deeds. Homer constantly forces his characters to choose between their loved ones and the quest for players, and the most heroic characters invariably choose the latter. Andromay pleads with Hector not to risk offending. His son, but Hector knows that fighting on the front rank represents the only means of winning my father's great glory. Paris, on the other hand, chooses to spend time in heaven rather than fight in the war. Accordingly, both the text and the other characters treat him with derision. Achilles debates returning home to live in each with his aging father, but he remains at Troy to in glory by killing. Hector, 
and evidence in petrol class. The gravity of the decisions that Fichtner and Achilles make is emphasized by the fact that each nose is paid ahead of time. The characters prize so highly the martial values of honor, honor, noble bravery, glory that they willingly sacrifice the chance to live a long life with those they love. The impermanence of human life and its creations. Although the Iliad chronicles a very brief period in a very long war, it remains completely conscious of specific aims awaiting each of the people involved. Troy is destined to fall as Hector explains to his wife and proceeds. Similarly, the Iliad recognizes that repeatedly reminds its reader that the creations of mortal have a mortality of their own. The glory of men doesn't live in their constructions, institutions, or cities. The prophecy of Tothas, as well as Hector's tender, worship and romance, and the debates of the gods, constantly remind the reader that Troy's lofty ramparts in form. There are some characters that develop the play. Achilles is one of the great characters in this poem, the son of the military man Peleus in the scene Thetis. The most powerful warrior in the Iliad, Achilles commands the Myrmidians, soldiers from his homeland of Pythia in Greece. Proud and headstrong, he takes off his easily reacts with blistering indignation when he perceives that his honor has been slighted. Achilles is wrath that at Agamemnon for taking his war prize, the maiden prizes, forms the main subject of the Iliad. Agamemnon, king of Messene and leader of the Achaean army, brother of King Menelaus of Sparta. Arrogant and often selfish, Agamemnon provides the Achaeans with strong but sometimes reckless and self serving leadership. Like Achilles, he lacks consideration and for thought. Most salient is tactless appropriation of Achilles' war prize, the maiden prizes, creates a crisis for the Achaeans. When Achilles insulted Petrus from the war. Petroclaus is another important character in this poem. Achilles' beloved friend, companion, and advisor Petrus grew alongside the great warrior in Pythia under the guardianship of Peleus. Devoted to both Achilles and both Achilles and the Achaean cause, Petrus stands by the Embraced Achilles but also turns Achilles' terrifying armor in an attempt to hold the Trojans back. Odysseus, a fine warrior that flavors of the Achaean commanders, along with Nestor. Odysseus is one of the Achaeans to best, best public speaker. He helps meditate between Achaemenon and Achilles during their quarrel and often prevents them from making a rash decision. Diomedes and Great Ajax, another important characters in this poem. Both the characters uh, intensifies the uh, plot of the story, the plot of the poem. And, and he often fight alongside Little Ajax, and the pair is frequently referred to as the Aences. Thank you very much for listening to this lecture.